You have entered the command zone, your destination for all aspects of Elder Dragon Highlander. Enjoy your stay. Dreaming of a white, a white Christmas Just like the ones I used to know But the treetops glisten And children listen to hear Sleigh bells in the snow all right, do we have to keep going? No, great, great song, <laughs> by the way. Also, good movie, Bing Crosby, uh, way back in the day. And um, uh, you can only dream about white Christmases here in California. You can <laughs> never actually have them. I'm dreaming of a sunny Christmas, which will certainly happen here in California. Well, you're going to an even hotter place I for know. Christmas. Well, it's because my parents are in Seattle all year, and so they're like, we need to go somewhere warm for Christmas. Get us out of here. We're going to Miami. I'm yummy. I'm yummy. Hey, everybody. How's it going? Welcome to the Command Zone. I'm your host, Jimmy Wong. How's it? It's Josh Lee Kwai. And this is our final episode. Possibly. Possibly of the year uh, because, well, it may not be, but it's the best of 2016 and year in review. What a year. What a year, actually. Um, great year for Magic the Gathering. Pretty bad year, otherwise, for a lot of my favorite musicians <laughs> passing away, uh, a lot of politics, a lot of just craziness happening. Let's, yeah, let's be honest. It was a rough and tumble year. It was a rough and tumble year. But for the command zone, it was a big year. It was a great year. And for the Chicago Bears. Not Bears, the Chicago Cubs. <laughs> I mean, I don't, I don't actually know if the Bears are still in it, so I can't even... Yeah, the, yeah. I don't think the Bears are ever really <laughs> in it. Um, yeah, 2016 was a wild, wild year, but yeah, uh, Magic the Gathering had a great year, um, and uh, so did the Command Zone podcast, and one of the big things that happened for us this year is we got sponsored by uh, Card Kingdom. Oh, Segwayman! Segwayman! Uh, it's been awesome so far. Uh, I'm so glad that we chose to be partnered up with Card Kingdom. They have been an awesome partner for us. Everyone that has tweeted at us, posted comments uh, in the YouTube videos or on our website, collected.company, has said so as well. Cardkingdom.com slash command zone is the number one place that you can go right now to buy cards. Uh, now, they have very fast shipping, but I don't think they'll be able to get it to you before Christmas uh, concerning this. Oh, actually, maybe it's they will. possible. I don't want to put them in that kind of situation where we're promising it. I'm sorry. I'm looking for uh, oh, testimony? a testimonial because they usually take pictures of them on the phone and then I read them. Yeah, but they're great. I mean, they they have a huge selection of cards. Um, they're always on top of it. They always have like sort of sales and stuff going on constantly and great testimonials. So I found one. It's from Andrew Mullen, who is at MTG Raps. Holy crap, is Andrew the guy that sent us that rap on that one episode? Yeah, I think it is. I'm pretty sure Andrew Mullen, I don't remember what episode it was. Oh my goodness. Where he sent in a rap. In fact, Terry, I'll find out what episode and then you can play that right now. Welcome to the Command Zone with Jimmy and Josh. My chase is number one since the episode dropped. We're up to 114 with all our friends. The super, the plane's walking again and again. I got a question though, that's what you want to know. That's why I made this song with no video. So I wanna know if you could unban, would it be Sylvan Primordial, Prophet of Crufix, or Primeval Titan? It's that guy. Uh... <laughs> He, he tweeted at us about Card Kingdom. He says, consistently impressed. Fastest shipping I've seen over the years. If I want cards by a certain date, only Card Kingdom. Only Card Kingdom. Uh, he has a great avatar on Twitter, by the way. Every time he tweets at us, I'm always like, ah, there it is. It's the, uh, the big fluffy guy from... It was him. Yeah, yeah. Uh, from uh, the, the movie, the big fluffy guy. Oh, uh, from Baymax. Big Hero 6. Yeah. Yes, Baymax from Big Hero 6, but with a Frexian symbol on his chest. Um, so yeah, it's Andrew. The anti Phil DeLuca Betamax. <laughs> <laughs> Betamax is not for everyone, as it turns out. Um, yeah, so cardkingdom.com slash command zone. That's where you guys can go to support the show, and we appreciate it very much. Another way you can support the show and directly support the show is our Patreon. We launched this. Uh, last month and it's been great so far it's been awesome it's it's opened up so many doors for us as content creators to make more things for you guys patreon.com slash command zone and we shout out one patreon user every show today we are shouting out our very first patreon that signed in at the ten dollar level Woo! morgan McHenry. thank you so much for the support we really appreciate it 
We hope that we're doing you proud. Mr. Morgan McHenry, MMM as they call you. Thanks so much for your support. It <laughs> means a lot. Um, it means a lot, see? He was like the fifth or sixth supporter as well. So he was in it early and the first at the $10 level, which means if you're at that $10 level, you get access to our playmats slash t-shirts, our first merchandise. When it comes out, you guys immediately get it. Uh, if you've been supporting the show for, I think, three months is the uh, the limit. Um, yeah, I think it's two. I think it's oh, or eight episodes total. Yeah. And uh, we want you to know that we are in development on what is going to be our playmat and or t-shirt. And Thanks to the Patreon, by yep, the way. So thanks so much. Um, oh, and also for the patrons, you're all eligible for a Christmas giveaway. We talked about it last episode. Um, the giveaway is going to be announced at the end of this episode. Yep. So if you guys won the giveaway, just send us an email at commandzonecast at gmail.com. And we'll get those prizes out to you. Uh, we'll try and do it um, as soon as possible. I don't know if they'll get there before Christmas, but think of it as a New Year's gift if it gets there after that. Okay. Well, let's talk about our year in review. So we're going to go through... This is how it's going to work. We are going to just go through the year and how it went down and some of the highlights of the year for us, for the show, for the Commander uh, format. And then at the very end, we've done sort of a poll among the patrons for a few categories. I, I think I guess we can talk about the categories here. Um, we won't announce the winners, but yes. we've got things like who was the best new planeswalker, who what was our best preview card. So of all the preview cards we got over the year, what ended up being the best card? Um, what was our best level up ep episode? Mm -hmm. uh, best reprint of the year, best intro song that we sang all year. Um, the best non-legendary, new non-legendary card, the best new legendary card, and best overall episode of the Command Zone. So that's going to be fun to see what everybody's, you know, what the uh, what the voters said. What the voters said. Is... I'm curious if it'll, if it'll line up with what I think. Yeah? I mean, I don't know. We'll see. We'll give our votes and we'll see what you guys said, the patrons as well. Uh, and then we're going to post the questions to Twitter this week uh, and see what the community at large thinks. Um, I don't know if they're all going to really have great votes on the best level up episode. They may, maybe they may you've have seen not them all. Maybe not. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> um, all right. Well, 2016 started off with kind of a bang. Uh, our very first episode was episode 92. Nice. It was the Oath of the Gatewatch set review. It was our first episode ever with the new Soul Ring animation intro oh. that Jeffrey Palmer did. And if you haven't watched our videos on YouTube, then you haven't seen it and you're crazy because he did this awesome thing where the old oh, Soul Ring. So cool. The new Soul Ring turns into the old Soul Ring, then it turns into our Command Zone logo. I'm doing things with my hand that don't do it justice, but. Yeah. That's how it sounds. That's basically exactly what it is. Yeah. Um, we did not sing in that intro. Whoops. Yep. And I forgot to say, how's it? Wow. So it was a dubious start to the year on that <laughs> on that level. <laughs> Maybe foreshadowing. Yeah. Um, set reviews. I really like doing the set review episodes. One, because they're easy to plan out. It's just choose your favorite cards that you think are going to be good for EDH and talk about them. Um, but uh, this year had a lot of great cards for Commander, and Oath of the Gatewatch did not disappoint. Uh, and I'd say, you know, it's just been a good year for Commander in general. Mm -hmm. Great year. Um, yeah. And then January 17th, we premiered the first two episodes of Kitchen Table Fables. So that is, these were our, how do we describe them in the Patreon video? Um, magic sort of table stories made into full short films. Turned to real life. Yeah, so that we did some you know cool special effects. We did it with uh, the, the professor from Tulare Community College. Our first two were called Permission and The Flicker. So Permission is on Tulare Community College page, and uh, The Flicker is on our YouTube channel. And then on January 22nd, we released the third episode, which was called Basilisk Caller. Yeah, and these were our uh, first foray into doing live action gameplay videos that aren't actual gameplay. We're, you know, we're trying to reenact moments in the games and stuff that people recognize uh, and hopefully can connect with. And they were a big hit. I think everyone loved them. Everyone wanted to see more. And that's part of the reason we launched the Patreon is to help us get the budget um, so that we're able to produce more in the future. So yeah, we're coming up on a year of those, actually. That's great. Yeah, it's true. Um, the Flickr is actually still our most popular, most downloaded video on YouTube. Really? Yeah, I think it's got like 75,000 views. Nice. So we did it. So we definitely want to do more. Uh, so that's one of the things for the Patreon. But those were super fun. Uh, a little story about the third episode, which is Basilisk Caller. Mm -hmm. It was actually, we were only going to do two, remember? Yeah. We were going to do the Flickr and Permission. And then 
the professor was very, very, he was like, only two? We should do a third one. And I was like, well, we don't really have a script for the third one. <laughs> and as we were literally like leaving, it, everyone else had left and it was me, Jimmy, the professor, and our friend Vincent, Vinny, who was in our last gameplay video. And we were sort of grabbing all the gear and walking back towards the car. And and we just started vamping and, and talking amongst ourselves. And we said, well, there's this one, I think it was actually like an arm piece, but it kind of looked like the Basilisk Collar card. Mm -hmm. And... I don't know whose idea ultimately was, but we started like just improving and we came up with Basilisk Collar, what basically what turned into that short. Yeah. And, and it we helped like, a lot that we ended up ADRing all of the lines for the soldier so that we could have him say whatever he wanted to fit the narrative of the jokes afterwards because we had to compile it together. Yeah, really good point. So through movie magic, we had Vincent standing in the soldier outfit, but he has a helmet on. Mm -hmm. And so we were like, okay, this way we only have to write Jimmy's half of the dialogue and we can just sort of like improv the night, but we can change it whenever we want to in, in post-production because you can't see their mouth moving. Yeah. Yeah. So all that dialogue for the night was actually written... Um, later. Some of it we kept from the improv, but a lot of it, it was literally like, Jimmy, you were talking to Vincent, and Prof and I were improv the lines for Vincent. So Vincent had the helmet on, and he, but it would be our voice you could hear off screen going like, that's not the story of David and Goliath. And, yeah. and he was sort of like acting like he was saying it. Yeah, it was great. It was just like this crazy, it's totally how it works in movies all the time, where it's like, we're just going to figure a workaround now and fix it later. Um, but it was great. I was able to get one of my really, really funny friends, Jake, to do the voiceover, and he's just he's got his very recognizable sort of deep voice, and and he gave a great read of it, and we just cut that in, and boom, that's list caller. If you haven't checked out Kitchen Table Fables, you definitely should. Please share them with your friends. We do want to do more. Um, I would say that's the most uh, enfranchised. You need to know magic the most for that one to really uh, strike a chord with you. The flicker and permission kind of can just make sense uh, from a like, oh, yeah, I don't play magic, but I get what they're doing. Uh, Basilisk Caller is like, wait, wait. <laughs> What are all these stats? Yeah. What are you talking about? You... Lifelink debt? Like, what? <laughs> uh, then it was episode 93. Episode 93 was sort of the bomb that got dropped early in the year on the format. It was the banning of Prophet of Crufix. Wah. And it was also a few other rule changes. So rule number four, which was the rule about um, adding mana to your mana pool outside your commander's color identity. Mm -hmm. Rule number four was removed. And the format moved to the new Vanco Vancouver Mulligan. So we got rid of Partial Paris, and we went to the Vancouver Mul Mulligan, which we use now, which is the uh, one free Mulligan, then go down to six, mm -hmm. five, four, three. And if you're at six or less, you scry one before uh, you play. Um, this is an interesting thing. Looking back, Jimmy, of those three things at the time, I thought, oh, man, Prophet of Crufix, that's going to change the format the most. Nope. But I don't <laughs> think it did. What do you Of those three things, what do you think is the biggest change? It has format? to be the Vancouver Mulligan. I agree. I've, I haven't seen anyone really abuse Rule 4 or like use it to the effect. Um, I've been thinking about making a Send Triplets deck for the longest time because now you can really cast the cards out of everyone's hand if you're able to generate all the colors of mana. But it's the Vancouver Mulligan that affected it. We talk about now having to make sure that you put more Signets and Rocks in your mana uh, base of your decks so that you're able to guarantee that you're going to be able to cast your spells on time because you're you not... You have to have more lands. Yeah, you can't selectively partial Paris your deck. And I think it, it for the most part, I think it's actually great. Um, I'm a big fan of it just because partial Paris had a very unbalanced effect. That some people's decks would abuse it way more than other people's. Um, so yeah, I, I liked it a lot. I think the Vancouver Mulligan is a good choice uh, to sort of normalize that part of the game with other aspects of Magic as was the removal of Rule 4. I will say also that episode 93 is our second most viewed episode of the year on YouTube. I didn't cross-reference with the audio downloads, but generally those are about the same as far as the amount they go up and down. So Yeah, it makes sense. It's a picture of Prophet of Crufix with the word banned superimposed over it. So uh, The last episode of January was episode 94, which was the most ban-worthy cards in Commander. I think we were influenced by anything. I wonder. Uh, <laughs> then we moved on to February. February wasn't... Not a ton happened. Uh, we had episode 95, which was pet cards. 96 was deck improvement. Mm -hmm. uh, and we talked about Marin with Alex Kessler. Oh, this was an interesting one. Episode 97 was Tall Tales. Do you remember that one? Yeah, Tall Tales. We haven't done it. We could do like Tall Tales number two, which is just, we just told some stories about cool things that happened in games and EDH games mm -hmm. that we were involved in. Um, and what we learned. Yeah. 
And we all came together as friends. Episode 98 was Eternal Masters and the Reserved List. So Eternal Masters got announced, but we didn't know what cards were on it. And then we also spoke a little bit about the Reserved List and whether it should remain or not. Something that actually you've talked more about uh, on in response with the professor, which is when we get to that point in the year, you guys will hear about it, I'm sure. Um, yeah, definitely. Oh, gosh, I'm going to get murdered. People <laughs> did not like my stance on the Reserved List, but there you go. Um, then we moved on to March and Episode 99 which was a special episode we called the Commander Summit. Mm -hmm. So we brought our friend Andy Hull from the Commander's Brew podcast and Phil DeLuca from the Commander and Pro podcast, and we sort of did this cool roundtable, um, state of the format, talk about the rules changes, what we would do if we were on the rules committee. Um, I thought it was really interesting, so I went through and listened to this episode, and what we did is we talked about the recent rule changes, which were the tuck rule change that happened the year before, mm -hmm. the Vancouver Mulligan, which we just mentioned, and the abolishment of rule number four, and each of us gave a um, number of value as to how much we liked the change. So 10 meant we really liked the new rule, and zero meant we hated the new rule. Mm -hmm. So um, on the tuck rule change, Andy said he was a five or a six, so he slightly liked it. Andy's from the Commander's Brew podcast, by the way. Phil said he was a four or a five, so about the opposite of Andy, where he slightly disliked the tuck, tuck rule change. Phil's from the Commander In podcast. And then, Jimmy, you said you were about a three or a four, so you disliked the tuck rule change, but not a lot more than Phil, just a little bit more. Jimmy's from the Command Zone podcast. <laughs> and I said I was a two or a three, so I did not like the tuck rule change. Josh was a two or three. He's also from the Command Zone podcast. In case you didn't know. Yeah. Um, I'll let you read the next one. The Vancouver Mulligan, so basically saying uh, you mold to another, you first get a free mold to seven, and then after that you go to six and you're able to scry, uh, and then five, four, three, two, one, obviously. Andy was a five out of a ten. So he thought, eh, fine, yeah. big, wasn't up or down on it. Phil was a nine out of a ten, big fan. Phil loved the new Mulligan rule. And myself, Josh and myself were both at eight, so we thought we, we, we thought quite it was liked good it. Yeah. yeah. Quite liked it. We gave it a B. <laughs> True. I guess, 80%. I guess Andy gave it a hard fail <laughs> if, that, if we're going yeah. from, on that grading scale. <laughs> I guess it's a C. We give it an A. Yeah. I don't know. Um, and then the abolishment of rule number four, Andy liked, said it was a seven. Phil was the same. Seven. Jimmy, you loved the abolishment of rule number four. You gave it a 10. That's why I first thought about making a send triplet deck. Uh, that was March. It's still December. Thinking. Still thinking about it. That deck's going to be awesome because you've been thinking about it for a long time. <sighs> I mean, I haven't been consistently thinking about it, but it's going to be made. <laughs> it's it's going to be awesome. It's going to get there, yeah. We're going to see it on the gameplay video soon, I'm sure. And mm. Josh said 7 out of 10. So everyone said 7 except for me, who I said 10. Um, but we all liked it. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I, I think it, it, in general, it just, it just makes sense. It doesn't break the game, and it, it opens it up in a healthy way. Um, um, we also ooh, pulled, this is interesting. yeah, we also talked to everybody and we asked who everybody thought the most powerful commander was uh, at that time. And that's in all of EDH. Um, Andy said Mizix. Phil said Karlov. Karlov. Uncle Carl. Yeah. And then Jimmy and I both said Narset. We're in general pretty much on the same page on all of these podcasts. Yeah, the we're close. <laughs> What a boring podcast. You guys agree on everything. <laughs> um, um, Andy, I think, uh, is right, correct, by the way. I, I think, think it's Narset still. Really? Yeah. I don't know. Mizzix, I, I guess Narset just has the ability to just, just straight up get there uh, yeah. faster than Mizzix, which has to play a much more controlly game, I guess. Mizzix has more chances to stumble because it happen it takes a little longer for it to mm -hmm. happen, whereas Narset, like, you know, sometimes turn six, it, Narset just wins. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think both are top tier, but I, I would put Narset a little above. Karloff. I don't know, Phil. I want to see that Karloff deck. Yeah, I want to play against it. Yeah. And then we did uh, sort of, not everybody answered this, but we did biggest issue facing EDH. So remember, this is in March of uh, this of 2016. Mm -hmm. And Phil said that he thought the biggest issue facing EDH at that time was the cost of cards. Yeah, being too prohibitive or um, reprints not coming soon enough to sort of mitigate some cards being cost, just costing way too much. And this was interesting. I forgot you had said this one, but this is another thing we talked about on In Response with the Professor, which oh, is... Yeah. The, the growing schism between the Rules Committee and Wizards of the Coast. That was my sort of biggest issue, I think, facing uh, EDH. It hasn't really come into play. Also, hasn't been resolved. It hasn't been resolved, yeah. I, I still think it's a, a big issue that needs to get resolved, which is, like, where does the real power lie in terms of figuring out what is correct for the format? Um, is it the Rules Committee, which doesn't really have a lot of empirical evidence outside of their local game store, or is it Wizards of the Coast, who owns the game and may have a more of an inherent bias towards one thing or the other? Interesting question. Um, and then the last thing we're going to talk about here is we also asked the question of each person at the summit, if you were on the rules committee, 
what would be your first initiative, the thing that you might try and like change or, or alter about the format? And uh, I answered, I would, and this is still be my answer today, I would want to reduce the ban list. I would just want to get that number of cards on the ban list down. I would want to take some things off of it. Andy very interestingly said, bring the Nephilim in as commanders back in March before we knew that four colored commanders were going to be the Commander 16 set. Uh, so Andy, you're... He was basically you're, right. You're right? Nostradamus, man. Yeah, you they basically did that. I yeah. mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is interesting considering our last episode yeah phil said adjust how poison works uh so either up the number of poison you need to kill someone um and he also said limit or ban infinite combos which is something that he does with his house rules already mm -hmm. and jimmy you said start an initiative to look into more alternative forms of Camanda. so like secret partners yeah, or Arch not Enemy tiny or star or all, yeah um but yeah, you wanted to sort of have the committee weigh in on, or, or yeah. maybe support or something. Um, just because there's so many house rules already, you know, like maybe even the house rule format, you know, I don't know. Just, just, just there, the commander it may eventually reach, I think, that point where it's like jumped its own shark kind of thing, where it's like, all right, we're the format has done everything and gotten in front of all the controversy it can. It needs to evolve. It needs to find some other ways to keep it fresh. Um, and then we moved on to the very exciting episode 100 live stream, still our only streamed episode ever. Yeah. We had um, like 800 concurrent viewers at one point, I think. Yeah. We, it was awesome. It was a very big hit. Um, even at Rocket Jump, the people were like, whoa, yeah. just for how many people we had in there. It, <laughs> we thought it was going to take two hours, I remember saying. Oh, it ended yeah. up taking like three and a half or four. We... Had a big mound of stuff we gave away. I think we gave away booster packs mm -hmm. and uh, from the vaults, and you gave away some foil uh, full art lands. And yeah. We even gave away like books. Remember, we used to have Del Rey was right. uh, worked with us a lot back then to give away books, and uh, we had I think Command Tower on uh, Twitter mm -hmm. gave away a fat pack. We gave away some fat pack. We gave away a ton of stuff. We had um, Wes, Vincent, Craig, and Phil from Commander in uh, playing live game behind us, and they would ring a bell when anybody, any, when anybody got knocked out, and we'd stop what we were doing, go over, and, and check out what happened, and get the story of like who knocked out who and why. Yeah, yeah, that was a lot of fun. It took about four hours, uh, and we built a deck live. We built Ailey Eternal Pilgrim on the stream, and that um, deck is awesome. Yeah, that deck is awesome. There are some cards in there that would change now, but the original list that we made is it's still there. Yeah, the deck is bad. <laughs> it's pretty bad, but you know it's hard building it live. Yeah, it, I mean it, it would say it's a it was a good start to a yeah, deck. There you go. Um, you're good. Well, yeah, March 18th we released a special episode because we had our Shadows over Innistrad spoiler card, and I thought this was going to make a huge impact on the format. Uh, I haven't seen it played once. Uh, maybe I've seen it. I don't know. I've seen it played once. I've seen it played once. Uh, Second Harvest, which is a, a spell that just essentially doubles all of your tokens on the battlefield at instant speed. Yeah, Ooh, for format. I still think the card's good. It oh, maybe just amazing. takes a little while to filter in because EDH, EDH is such a big format. Yeah, yeah. And it's very good for specific mm. kinds of decks, too. Mm -hmm. uh, episode 101 was the correct answers where we talked about, you know, uh, the difference between strong players and weak players and why strong players just tended to feel like they had more solutions to problems in the game mm -hmm. uh, that would pop up than weaker players. Episode 102 was our Shadows Over Innistrad set review, which included Second Harvest, of course. Um, yeah, uh, that's our second set review of the year. Yep. Yeah, that's our second set review. Then we moved into April. Uh, if you remember, in Shadows Over Innistrad, one of the big sort of legendary cards that came out, probably the big one that everyone was talking about at the time, was the Gitrog Monster. Rawr. So we did episode Arbit. 103. <laughs> Arbit. 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 <laughs> it's, it's a pirate frog, evidently. Yeah. So we did episode 103 on the Gitrog mo Monster slash self-expression in deck building. Yeah. Um, which was kind of tied to the Get Rog Monster. Uh, episode 104 in April was Top 10 Lands in EDH. You wrote we had Hooked on a Feeling as the intro. Was, there, was that the first time we did that out of the two times we've done that yeah, now? Yeah, that was the first time. I, I, I noted those because we're going to, uh, in the in the voting best oh, of, right. we're going to do the, the intro song. So episode 104 was when we first time we sang Hooked on a Feeling. Also, so it was Top 10 Lands. Mm -hmm. Jimmy, your number one was Ancient Tomb. And mine was Maze of Ith. Would you change that now? I don't think so. Maybe Island. I'm just kidding. Uh, top 10 non-basics. Um, I can't think of any lands that have come out since that have blown me away. I mean, Gaia's Cradle was on my list as well. But I think I just said Ancient Tomb because it puts it, you can put it in any deck. And same with Maze of Ith as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, yeah, I think those both look good. I yeah. don't know. I don't know. Uh, 105 was EDH Essentials. If you remember, this is the episode where Craig sort of took the reins of the show. He mm-hmm. had written out a whole show and been like, guys, I want to do the show. And we're like, yeah, here you go. Yeah. And uh, so he sort of ran that show, which was fun. That was a first ever for us. And then we moved on to May, and we had our first sideboard episode, which is a uh, a series that we've only done two of so far. Uh, But it's sideboard. We're talking about draft format. So in this case, Shadows over Innistrad draft with uh, special guest Frank Lepore. Yeah, so we got... That was cool, because we got to talk with a Magic Pro and Mm -hmm. actually talk about one of the other aspects of Magic that we love, which is draft. Frank had a great year, by the way. He uh, top-aided the Pro Tour with an Eldrazi deck before they banned. um, Yeah, it was that modern Pro Tour with Oath of the Gatewatch with uh, Eldrazi Winter, as they call it. Yeah, before they banned Eye of Ugin, which was just an absurd card in that deck. Um, And then episode 106, we brought on another special guest, which was Allison Lures, uh, who works uh, with the community at Wizards of the Coast and also is a writer on some of the stories. And that was a lot of fun. That was, I think, an episode that a lot of people liked because we got to talk about building a deck in a different way because usually we're focused more on the spiky winning side of things but in this case build around the story yeah that was pretty cool um episode 107 was the four color commanders and organization so this was when we first learned that four color legendaries were going to be coming out in the commander 2016 product Mm -hmm. we were pretty excited we did like a huge we had recorded our episode already and then the month our episode come out tuesday we usually record the thursday before but on monday they announced the four color commanders and jamie and i called each other we're like did you hear yeah i heard what do we do we got to record something so we literally recorded a whole new like 20 minute intro just talking about that and a few of the other announcements they'd made and we plugged it into the front of that show yeah um we were pretty stoked and then that show was also the organization part is about like how to organize your cards which i don't know where i get off talking to anyone about that because i'm (laughs) worst at it yeah that's sort of just my organization thing (laughs) it was more you and me going oh you do that all the binders are right behind you down there my my system organized yeah um and uh, episode 108 Ooh, eternal masters got spoiled uh so we had two cards that we previewed which was mystic tutor and ashnod's altar and then that one we sang don't worry be happy Yep, and that is nominated for Best Intro Song of the Year. We did get two pretty sweet preview cards. Yeah, those were awesome. Yeah. Ashnod's Ulster, I was really stoked about. Uh, they both have new art as well, and EMA was something that we all sort of like been like, oh my gosh, this could be the set that, that does it. This could be the one where we get everything we've ever wished for. We got a lot. Yeah, we did get a lot. And then May 21st and 22nd was when GPLA happened, so this was a pretty fun time. Uh, I actually had the prof... And James from Loading Ready Run crashed mm-hmm. out on my house, and you had um, some people crashed out here. Kenji right? was out here, yeah. Yeah, and Kenji was here. And uh, we had a lot of fun, played a ton of Commander. Ton of Commander. Met yeah. a lot of fans. It was awesome. Um, I remember Melissa DeTora opened another foil Tarmogoy for fourth, oh, apparently. Yeah. I got a picture <laughs> of it. Yeah. She, she evidently has the luck opening the cards. Yeah, seriously. Yeah, that was fun hanging out with uh, everybody. You actually made an appearance on Magic TV. I don't of... think the episode ever aired. I oh, think it no? was just for the people attending yeah, the event. Or was it on streamed on Twitch at that time? No, it wasn't. I don't think it was streamed. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. So it's a private they episode. You'll never know. Stuff. It was cool. I was. I mean, maybe the footage didn't turn out. Who knows? Yeah. But that was with uh, LSV on stage, and we talked about top 10 flip cards. Which is exciting. I didn't know that never came out. Yeah. What was the number one flip card? Do you Chaos remember? Orb. Oh, okay. Because yeah. <laughs> you're literally That's flipping. Because you got to flip it. Oh, play on words. That's yeah. great. Uh, uh, and then at the end of the month, episode 109 came out, which is our EMA set review. And this was, I was so excited. Sensei's top was being reprinted. Mana Force Crypt. of Will, Mana Crypt. Vampiric Tutor. Uh, that set's insane. Jason the Mind Sculptor. Yeah. That's, by the way, when we made our first plans to, uh, to take a trip. That's true. Um, I don't think I wrote that down. We're going to talk about that next. Uh, I will say, Eternal Masters, if you didn't get a chance to play it the first time around, you can play it right now. They are Mm -hmm. re-releasing it, basically, and it's cheaper than it ever was. So I know our sponsor, Card Kingdom, had... I think they still do, but at least previously they had boxes of Eternal Masters booster boxes for $190. It was originally MSRP at $250, so that's a big price cut. So maybe you didn't have a chance to draft it before. It's a little more expensive. This is a good time to give it a shot. It is an awesome draft format, and you have a chance to pull really, really valuable cards. Really valuable cards. Yeah. Oh, my gosh, so good. Yeah, so we did plan a trip, um, and what we did is we got a bunch of our friends that work at Riot, um, our friend 
uh, Brian Tran, who works at... He was actually kind of the one that suggested yeah. it, and it was Brian's trip, and we we're like, all right, Brian, like... Brian's a guy from Are Twitch. we invited? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he used to work at Ryan. Am I invited? I ended up having to organize everything. Yeah, um, right. But Brian was sort of the, the person that pushed it, and then Kenji came, mm-hmm. and uh, so we got eight guys, and we uh, got some rooms in Vegas, and we all met there, and we got a bunch of product, and we just drafted for an entire weekend, Eternal Masters, all weekend. Yeah, that was unbelievably fun, um, and we also got to play a lot of craps, uh, and, you know, and that, we all won at craps. Yeah, which an anomaly. Don't expect that to happen anytime. A, but it was a, awesome. A bunch it, of people get yeah. together and, and I, gamble. I can't wait for Modern Masters next year. We got to do it again, right? Or at least Eternal Masters two. Or we well, just I mean, have we'll, to. Find we will it. be in Vegas. Oh yeah, that's a really good point. Yeah, look, look forward to that. Hopefully, a lot of you guys will be there as well. We definitely want to host another kind of meetup. Maybe it'll I, be bigger and better than the last time. Who a knows? lot of people tell us all the time, someday I hope I can get a game in with you guys. Listen, if you're at GP Vegas, you'll have a very good chance. So I would yeah. start looking into rooms and booking trips for that now because we will definitely be there. Yeah, 100%. Uh, on to June. Our first episode of June came about because we had some negative play experiences. It was called Episode 110, How to Play Faster. <laughs> this might have been a little bit because of GPLA. It's not that there were negative play experiences. It was just noticing that some people play slower. Yeah. So we were just trying to do a PSA to the Including community. ourselves as well. Yeah. Uh, and it was a PSA slash just sort of tips on how to improve the speed of your gameplay, which means like if we're going to tutor for something and you want to do it on someone's end step, do it as soon as you can and just say like, this is going to happen on your end step. If something else happens in between... I'll reset and, and figure out if I want to deal with it. Otherwise, you know, it gives me more time to shuffle up, find the card I want, et cetera. I would highly recommend that episode. It's nominated for one of our best level ups of the year. Yeah. Uh, and then June 20th, Jimmy, this was pretty exciting. So, yeah. Uh, there was a show called Access Magic, and it was by Wizards of the Coast, and it was the launch of Eldritch Moon, and it was hosted by none other than Jimmy Wong. Yeah. So I interviewed, uh, there were three episodes total. Uh, one of the interviews was with Mark Rosewater, which was really exciting. Uh, I filmed this back in, I think, January, so I had to hold on to a lot of information, including what the new Emrakul was <laughs> for, like, four or five months. He didn't even tell me. Yeah. Sorry, Josh. That whole time, he knew about <laughs> Brazella. Brazella, Voice Emrakul. of Nightmares, Emrakul. Man. The new Liliana, The Last Takes Hope. those NDAs seriously. Yeah. I've signed plenty of my life. Um, it was pretty cool to see you as, like, the face of the launch of not just that set, but, again, we'll talk about um, Kaladesh also. Yeah. I, that's when the, the nickname Mr. Magic first got coined by my friend d oh boy <laughs> uh episode 111 speaking of brazella was our bruin brazella episode and our eldritch moon preview card which was soul separator mm. this was actually our most viewed episode of the year on youtube at least again i mm-hmm. didn't double check with the audio downloads but um that was pretty exciting a lot of things happened this episode so uh, it was our first ever episode with card kingdom as our sponsor sweet yeah that was a big thing um that means, what is this? This is episode 138. Yeah. So we have been sponsored by Carnegie Kingdom for about 27 episodes now for about nice. half a year. Nice. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, it was our first full video episode, too. Oh, yeah. Not counting the live stream. I believe we recorded it at Rocket Jump. Mm-hmm. Um, that's really sweet. Oh, yeah. And as as in response to it being the first episode with Card Kingdom and our first video episode, we had one of our best giveaways ever. Our- Keys to the Kingdom. Yeah, we were giving away the keys to the kingdom. We gave away two entire boxes worth of booster packs for <laughs> Eternal Masters. Um, we did it over uh, over Twitter to our followers there over the course of, I think, a week or, or, or 12 days or something. Yeah, that was awesome. Yeah. And big ups to Card Kingdom for like really making the launch of our sponsorship with them a, a fun and, and very rewarding one at that. Oh, crap, I'm behind. Okay. Nice. Um, then we went into July, so we're halfway through the year now. Episode 112, Fostering a Healthy Playgroup. Episode 113, The Eldritch Moon Set Review. Episode 114 was EDH Archetype Series, Super Friends. So we went back towards our our Archetype Series, which mm-hmm. we need to continue. <laughs> yeah, there's plenty of archetypes we have not addressed yet, of course. Um, episode 115 was Listener Questions. You know, I've noticed that the listener question episodes don't get a ton of... They don't get watched as much. I wonder why that is. Maybe you guys can answer that for us. We should... I mean, we did another one later in the year, and I think I put a very clickbaity title on it. Did that one do better? It did. Hmm. So it might just be the title, I guess? No, I mean, there's. I mean, if, if there's... Like, set reviews always get more views, I think... Uh, so Q&A ones just are not as popular. People don't like yeah. the Q&A. You get to hear your own voice. We give away stuff. I don't know. That's interesting to me. Maybe it's just for our most enfranchised listeners. Thanks, guys and gals. Um, oh, then we went into August, and episode 116 was the Deck Doctors episode. Oh, a return of Deck Doctors. With Ailey, Eternal Pilgrim. This was a deck by Alex Jones. I think this was, again, I remember talking about the episode like a year since we did the last Deck Doctors. And um, 
it was a good chance to get another shot at Ailey because I, I always felt like our episode 100 deck was not very good. <laughs> there were a lot of things going through our minds when we filmed that episode. I was a mess at the end of it because I was so tired and sweaty. Episode 100 is the most difficult episode we've ever shot. Ever. I don't yeah. think I've ever been that tired in my life. Yeah. Oh, gosh. The setup and breakdown, too. Oh, everything. Good times. Episode 117, Building on a Budget. This is also nominated for our Best Level Up episode of the year. Very important episode, uh, How to Build, obviously, if you have a budget. Uh, you, we came up with that episode because, for some reason, you had read the description of our podcast. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and it says, like, focus on all aspects of Commander, including deck building, budget builds. Budget builds, yeah. You know, strategy, politics, and more. And you were like... We've never we've done one episode on budgets the entire time. We need yeah. to do another episode. So it wasn't even <laughs> dedicated to budgets, really. Um, so yeah, I was like, we need to make sure we return to our you know the promises that we laid out. It's like a year later, how did the politician do with their campaign promises? Like two uh, years later, how did the <laughs> command zone do? Like oh, we no, got we missed. We, it's like we didn't even see those words. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, Episode 118, we finished the Color Wheel series. So th- this was a, August was a big month for us in terms of completing things. That's true. Deck Doctors, budget. This was our responsibility month. Yeah. This is like, okay, we got to get back to our roots here. Everyone's we, going back to school, too. Yep. <laughs> is this the only series we've actually comp- completed, I think? Right. Yeah. All well, our, I mean... Some of them can't be completed, yeah, but, you like know, top architect. tens and stuff, we could... We're, we're working towards it. Don't worry about it. It'll happen. Yeah. Uh, oh, we also had our Conspiracy 2 preview card. Burgeoning. Burgeoning. That was a big one. That was a big one. That's a, that's a sweet card. I'm glad I have a lot of them in there and a lot of my decks now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Thank goodness. That card was getting up there, and now it is easily accessible, so you can build on the budget. I might pit, start picking them up, because not as much Conspiracy 2 was opened as people thought. Mm-hmm. Um, so, anyway. Although, no, it was reprinted in the Commander 2016 product, so maybe maybe the price is fine. I don't know. I don't know about finance. Ask the Brainstorm Brewery guys. Get a foil one. Speaking of the Brainstorm Brewery guys. Oh, yeah. Episode 119, we did Carador, Ghost Chieftain, with special guest Corbin Hostler. Corbin does coverage for Magic. Um, He is a longtime friend of the show. Uh, We got to play craps with him in Vegas at GP Vegas the year prior. One of the co-hosts of Brainstorm Brewery, the podcast. Yeah, he's a great guy. We talked about his baby as well. He just had a kid. Super cute. So, Corbin or the kid? Both. (laughs) Corbin, Corbin is pretty cute. He's a cutie. All right. Episode 120 was, how would you change the color pie? We this had five is your, episodes in August? I guess so. My goodness. This is your um, clickbaity title for the question. Yeah, it was a Q&A. Yeah. But yeah. that was a great question. How would we change the color pie? Yeah. Or like what alterations will we make to it? You know, I was in Iceland um, during this. So oh, really? a lot of these episodes were actually pre-recorded all at once and then released, you know. Oh, that's right. So we actually recorded an episode here now that I think about it that wasn't released until what, like October? Yep. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we recorded an episode with Craig that was supposed to be released in August, and then it got pushed back because of PAX. Oh, boy. So in September, from the 2nd to the 5th, was PAX West. And um, so much stuff happened at PAX that it actually so sort of screwed up much. our yeah podcast release schedule. So our first podcast in um, September was supposed to be Talrand, the Sky Summoner with Craig, but PAX just sort of like, changed the entire plan for what we were doing. Mm-hmm. So if you don't know, Jimmy was the MC. At all the big Kaladesh announcements, at the at what, opening, at what, at what, at what, at the opening and closing ceremonies, mm-hmm. um, we've got a lot of footage of that from my vlog. Yeah, because uh, I was also there as the WotC community ambassador. I don't know. Do you want to talk about that? That was pretty sweet, man. Yeah, PAX is definitely the biggest event for Wizards every year. They've sort of made that their flagship time to put up a big show. And for this, they always announce the fall set. So last year was a big announcement because they announced Expeditions for the first time with um, Battle for Zendikar, and in Kaladesh, they announced. Kaladesh, and they had the World Magic Cup there as, not World Magic Cup, sorry, the World Championships there as well. Um, it was an awesome, beautiful stage. He took over the entire Paramount Theater in the middle of downtown uh, Seattle. It was sweet. Um, they also had a ton of community events, and Josh was there. You got to play against Josh if you wanted to uh, with these sort of pre-made decks. Um, that was really, really sweet. You sat right next to Andrew Brown, who and is Melissa. now working, and Melissa, who, who are now both actually working at Watsi. so congrats to both of them as well. But, I mean, the coolest thing was Jimmy was up there on stage, was the face of, you know, the entire thing. I mean, you came, you were the first person to come walking out on the stage when they started announcing, when yeah. the Kaladesh thing, like, it was really like, and now we're going to talk about Kaladesh, and here's Jimmy Wong, and you were just Whee! out there by yourself um, as this, like, sort of, like, face and voice of, of magic at that Mr. moment. Mr. Magic. Yeah. It was pretty sweet. I got goosebumps, man. I was like, really? wow. Oh, wow. That's awesome. I was, like, so proud. I was like... 
I had a blast. It was a ton of fun. We got to preview tons of all the new mechanics from Kaladesh, uh, the energy uh, thing, a uh, new sort of mechanic as well. Um, and at the end of it, Chandra, Torch of Defiance. Oh, yeah. Uh, so Christine Sprankle came out, and she was dressed as Chandra, and she sort of, and mm-hmm. the fire came up, and yeah, that was pretty sweet. Yeah. So that PAX was a blast. I'm hoping we both get to be there again next year doing more awesome stuff. And we also had a, a gathering at Card Kingdom. So Card Kingdom, our sponsor is actually, they, their like storefront, their brick and mortar is in Seattle. And so we got to go there, have a gathering. I we had like 25, 30 mm-hmm. other EDH players. We got to play a lot of Commander. It was, it was really magic fun. The gathering. Yeah, it was pretty fun to hang out with everybody. Um, if you want to see what that was like, I did a vlog. It's called Josh, Josh's Pax Vlog, and it's on our YouTube channel. Um, you I can, love that video. It's, it's very easy to find. And, and it just sort of documents everything and, I, I, and what Jimmy was doing also as far as like how Pax went uh, Pretty fun. I, I mean, I put it together, so I guess I'm plugging my own stuff here. But you get to see like yeah, we're playing our stuff. It's on the channel. <laughs> uh, you get to see like the professor, um, oh, professor Melissa, a lot. And, and and like basically all, and all of our and... yeah, all of our friends on the show in real life in the vlog. Yeah, super fun. Pax was great. Um, and while we were at Pax, we actually recorded episode 121. So this was going to be the episode that was going to be the Craig episode. Mm-hmm. Um, sorry, Craig, you got bumped by Glenn Jones, who was. Uh, on the development team, I believe, for Conspiracy 2. And, and so, he used to be a co-host of the Masters of Modern, our sister podcast. Glenn's a good friend of ours and a really cool guy and a very, very smart magic mind. You know, he was a pro player, too, mm-hmm. and has worked in coverage. And so he came on the show and talked about Inside the Set, Conspiracy 2. Yeah, and it was really cool talking to Glenn. He's obviously a very good player as well. He's, you know, competed on the professional level quite a bit. So that was really cool to, to talk to him and get his... Uh, non-spoilery thoughts about Conspiracy 2. Yeah, it was it was pretty awesome. A lot of Conspiracy was played at PAX mm-hmm. because it was sort of the new set there at the time, so we got to draft it quite a bit. It's been fun to see Glenn, who's, like you said, a pro player, a more spiky player, but we've, we've played Commander with him. We've played Conspiracy with him. He's actually worked on multiplayer products now, and to see him sort of open his eyes to that aspect of magic has been really cool and, and how yeah. he gets it i mean he totally gets how multiplayer and everything works and it's really nice to see that within wizards there's that healthy commander community and people like glenn are really embracing it and they understand the format and you know it's pretty cool yeah also at pax we got the chance to interview some of magic's lead designers specifically mark rosewater and our old friend gavin verhe so we got to go up uh, during the show and have like 15 to 20 minutes with both of them uh, so we had a Kaladesh preview card as well. So like, there was so much that happened at PAX. It like it loaded us up for three full episodes essentially, including your PAX vlog. Um, also in the air tonight was uh, nominated for our best intro song here. Yeah, for that, the Kaladesh preview. That's card. a good one because of the gorilla. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah. So this our Kaladesh preview card was Padim Console of Innovation. So. Mm-hmm. That was pretty cool. Interviewing Rosewater was pretty sweet. I mean, you'd been yeah. around him a lot at that point. I had not. I'd done a tour with, at Wizards oh, with right, him, right. and I'd met him, and I, we'd play. I'd whooped him in foosball, but um, <laughs> had to throw that in there. And but I hadn't been around him a lot. And with, you know, Mark's just one of those guys that like it, he's probably the second most important person to Magic ever outside of Richard Garfield. Yeah. yeah, and that's debatable, but I think he probably is. So it was pretty cool to get to sit down with him and get his thoughts and you know. He wasn't able to give us any real information about Commander 2016, though we tried. Yeah, but it was great. Again, like, you're talking to the brain, really, behind a lot of Magic's biggest developments, and he's been there as one of the guiding fathers. You know, him with a couple of other people, like Aaron Forsyth and stuff, have been there to really shape the format of Magic the Gathering for the modern day. I mean, chances are, if there's something you love about the game, then Mark's at least a part of that. Yeah. September, the month that keeps on giving, episode 123 was our Kaladesh set review. Uh, interesting, great set. Can't wait for Ether Revolt because a lot of the energy cards in Kaladesh are going to be a lot more relevant because more cards will be entering the format. This is interesting. So episode 123 was Kaladesh set review, and then episode 124 was the Conspiracy 2 set review. Uh, and we put in parentheses, for posterity. See, what happened is that um, I went on vacation in August when Conspiracy 2 came out. And so mm-hmm. when I left... Conspiracy 2 hadn't been spoiled fully yet, so we couldn't do the set review. And we, like I said, we banked all those episodes. We, we, I think we recorded like four in one day that one time so that Ugh. we would have enough to release. Why do we do that to ourselves? Because we owe it to the listeners. That's right. But then we were behind because we didn't do the Conspiracy 2 set review. And we felt like, man, it'll be really weird if in like a year somebody wants to look at our Conspiracy 2 set review and we just don't have it. Yeah. So we recorded it here. And uh, also our intro song was You've Lost That Love and Feeling. 
but not that Conspiracy 2 set review. We got that. <laughs> you Conspiracy didn't lose that. set review. Yeah, you didn't lose that. <laughs> uh, moving on to October, episode 125. Finally, uh, we released our Tauron Sky Summoner deck tech with Craig. Um, it was kind of a deck doctor's, actually. Yeah. And that was in the initial flurry of those four episodes we recorded prior to Josh going on vacation. Um, Josh, by the way, went straight from your vacation to PAX, so you must have been exhausted by the end of that. Yeah, super tired. Um, yeah, because we flew from Iceland into Seattle, and I literally, like, you know, I was like, well, I can't deal with jet lag because I have all these. <laughs> Part of the deal was, you know, I was working for WOTC kind of that weekend as a yeah. community ambassador. So they had a schedule and I had to be at all those things. So I was just probably kind of like how you feel now after Barcelona. I'm, yeah. <laughs> I blacked out. Where am I? What's happening? <laughs> what happened? Oh, cool. <laughs> uh, episode 126, the meta and you. Uh, the meta was a question we always got about, like, what is the meta? What is meta? Um, it's not a basketball player that changed his name. <laughs> It is <laughs> the meta. <laughs> uh, yeah, if you guys know what I'm talking about, Meta World Peace. Um, yeah, so that was a fun episode. Uh, and episode 127 was the card advantage versus card draw. A question from listener Sam Mackey, who won a Kaladesh bundle, by the way, for that. And uh, this is nominated as one of our best level up episodes of the year. Episode 128 was the Commander 2016 preview cards. Uh, we had Cool Entertainment which was our new card. And then we had two reprints to preview, which was Eroas, God of Victory, and Hannah, Ship's Navigator. That was the first time we ever got three. In fact, we sort of, on the scale of it, we had one preview card for right. Shadows. We had two for Eternal Masters and then three for Commander 2016. But only one for Kaladesh. So True. Little, I'm ignoring was, that. I'm ignoring that. It was like a roller coaster. I was ignoring that. But because <laughs> I'm thinking, you know, eventually, like in 2021, we're actually just going to preview the entire <laughs> set. <laughs> Including the limited cards. But like, <laughs> hey, you guys play Commander, but you want to find out about this two mana 2 2 bear? You know, how many pre cards did you preview this year? It's got to be like 30. I previewed a lot of yeah. cards this year. I was there for, oh my gosh, let's see if I can list them all. I was there for Emrakul, uh, Gisela, and Bruna. Brazella. Uh, Brazella. So that's four, I guess, total. Uh, Liliana. Uh, in Kaladesh, I was there for uh, Propeller Pioneer. I was there for... Um, Sahili. Sahili. Chandra, the 6-1 Trample uh, Haste. Uh, uh, Fleetwood. Fleetwheel. Cru no, no, no. no. It, it was the, it's the one at Uncommon. I don't know. Um, yeah, it's a lot of cards. <laughs> I don't know. More than all the ones for this show. Pretty cool. I may be the... <clears throat> I mean, Actually, I think I am the person that is by far preview oh, the I'm most sure. cards even <laughs> more than anyone in wizards of the coast <laughs> more than rosewater probably oh my gosh. probably i mean there's some crossover because he was he was previewing some of those cards i feel you. very fortunate by the way guys to be in come on it's seat. sweet it's, it's sweet it's, it's sweet. sweet i had no idea after like coming back to magic the gathering i haven't played it as a kid uh and then taking like a 15 year break and then coming back that that i would be in this position um and a lot of course credit due to josh who came up with the idea of doing a podcast in the first place Two years of the podcast, and Jimmy's the face of magic. It's the coolest thing ever. Um, we yeah. also sang Hooked on a Feeling on that episode for the second time. So, you know. <laughs> That's why it's nominated. It's nominated because it was the only song we did twice this year. It's because we had three preview cards, right? Yeah, we were hooked on a preview <laughs> card. Uh, now we're almost up to current time. So we're in November. Episode 129 was the first look at Commander 2016. So we didn't do full breakdowns of the decks. We just sort of looked at the whole thing. Yeah, November's uh, always our Commander month yeah. uh, for the pre-cons that Wizards releases. Then we went into Hyperdrive here, and we've been in Hyperdrive ever... <laughs> Till, till now. Yeah, so we released two episodes uh, a week for a little while. We did Atraxa and Yidris, which was episode 130 and 131. Um, and then we did our first gameplay video on November 11th, which was the out-of-the-box Commander 2016 gameplay video. Thanks and to Trick for sending us the Commander decks early so that we could do it. We like, I got the decks, I was like, Josh, look what I got. And it's like, let's record the gameplay video. Let's go. We talked about the gameplay video and how we might do it, and then... For whatever reason, it just lined up like we had the days available to shoot it like right after we received the stuff. And yeah. then what happened is it ended up taking like way longer to edit than I thought. But we just, you know, stayed up all night for a few nights to get it out before because we, we were like, this video has to come out at least before the product itself comes out. And I think we came out on the Friday that it came out. So we almost came out before. Yeah. Um, episode 132 was our Kaneos and Tiro episode. Uh, we only released one episode that week, though, I think, right? Right. I'm counting outside the box as a second episode that right, week. Right, right, right. Uh, and then November 22nd, we launched our Patreon. Da-da-da-da! We did it, boys. We got it. By the way, 
the Patreon video on our YouTube channel only has like eighteen hundred views. Come on, guys. Come on, guys. Ten thousand views for everything. Eighteen hundred for that. It just doesn't look good. Maybe we should make it a clickbaity title like "How to Win More Things." <laughs> that's great. How to, and then this happened. Yeah. <laughs> no, actually, that's the title: "How to Win More Things and Then This Happened." It's a little long, but I'd, I'd click on it. I'd click on it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, then we did two episodes the following week, which was 133 and 134, Brea, then Saskia. Yeah, and that completed the five decks that they released for Commander 2016 and are sort of uh, deck breakdowns uh, and analyzing the decks and what they have in them and what we would do to make quick adjustments on the budget. And then December just happened, so we'll go through it really quickly. 135 was the deck testing with the C16 stuff. We talked about the decks we played in a gameplay video that we then released a couple days later, which was Game Nights Episode 1. This may be the most tired we've ever been uh, filming an episode. We did it right after playing three games and recording all day. That's actually a really good point. So what happened is, yeah, we set aside a day to record the gameplay, and then we, we decided that that same day... After the gameplay recording, we were going to have to record the podcast. And so mm-hmm. <laughs> I remember we were both like the, the uh, uh, like my mouth barely worked by the end of that episode. I remember just thinking like, I, just, I think I've been talking for like six minutes. I don't think Josh has said anything. <laughs> and I looked over to you and you were just like. I was like, keep going, Jimmy. Yeah, keep going. Bring us home, baby. And then when, you started, talking, when you started talking about Kaidel, I was like, I'm, I was like drinking old cold coffee. I was like, oh, please <laughs> keep me up. Yeah, sometimes you just bite off more than you can chew. That yeah. happened in that case. That but anyway. sounds like the history of the command zone is us constantly biting off more than we can chew and then being like, well, I guess we got to just figure it out. That's, yeah. Well, it's better than the other, than the other problem. Yeah. Because um, on December 4th, we released the first episode uh, of the newly titled Game, Game Nights. Nights. Yeah. Yeah. And, and both the decks that in episode 135 were the ones that we played. I think that's going to be a thing we're going to try to do. I'm not saying we can do it every time, but uh, tie the episode to the gameplay video so that yeah. we're talking. So Because the gameplay video doesn't have time to go super in-depth on the deck. It's just supposed to be done in 20 to 22 minutes or so. And so this gives us a chance to like talk about the decks we played in a more in-depth fashion that's more mm-hmm. like the command zone. So um, that was cool. Episode 136 was... Uh, Commander at Watsi, Commander at Wizards, I guess, and mm-hmm. uh, the Atraxa alterations with Trick. Yeah, good old Patrick Jarrett, or Trick as he's known on the interwebs, came and talked about what it was like the, the employee culture of playing Commander at Watsi, which I think was really interesting. And then we did the last week's episode, Combos, Concessions, and Controversy, which hopefully you listened to. We won't go over too much. Now we're on to the exciting part. Yeah, it's time. For the best of 2016. Ba, 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 ba. Best. 2016. <laughs> That was very demonic. <laughs> that sounded like Yoda. Toronto 16. Toronto 16. Toronto 16. You're Best like. of you said. <laughs> <laughs> All right. First category we have. Mm, new Planeswalker is best. <laughs> okay, we had right, four choices for Best New Planeswalker. By the way, we also asked our Patreons to chip in on the conversation. So after each category, we're going to see which they thought was the best. Uh, and so We the, did the nominees. It was multiple choice nominees, for yeah. them. So the nominees for Best New Planeswalker are Chandra Flamecaller. She's four red red, uh, and she has three abilities. She's not the newest Chandra, but this right. one uh, can make two three ones with haste, uh, can make you discard and draw. And has like do, a wrath. Yeah, damage-based wrath. Okay, the next one was Liliana the Last Hope. She's Liliana. Three mana. Tamio Field Researcher. This is the three-color Tamio. Bant. Yep. Ooh, and, and then Gaia, Ghost Assassin. Designed by our good friend and yeah. uh, recent guest, Glenn Jones. Yeah. Actually, she's not eligible for Best New Planeswalker because she just flickered out. She'll be back for 2017, though. <laughs> <laughs> so, wait, who do you think is the Best New Planeswalker? Uh, I'm a little biased. I'm going to go for Chandra Flamecaller. I think she is by far one of the best red Planeswalkers ever printed. It's only one color so that everyone can play her, uh, or a lot more decks can play her. And I think all of her abilities are really relevant. She had Impulsive Draw on her? No. She didn't? No, no, no. Her uh, plus is making two three ones with haste. Her minus is sort of a wheel effect. Oh, yeah, that's 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 draw, though, but it's not yeah, a pulse yeah, of draw. Yeah, so it's card draw in red, yeah. essentially. Um, I'm with you on Chandra, then, because anything that gives card draw to red, I think, is needed. And her other ability, the, the fact that she has a wrath, too, makes her, like, pushes her into, like, yeah. very good oh, yeah, the, yeah, the wrath is great, too. So let's see what the um, the voters said. The voters said, by a large margin... Tamio, Tamio, field researcher. 48% of the vote went to Tamio. Yeah, and we're talking 87 responses here. Uh, 23%, the second uh, category was Liliana, the last hope, which is really interesting because I actually would put her further down the list. And Chandra came in la- uh, in third place with 17% of the vote. Wow. 
Wow. Well, so we weren't in tune with our voters on that one. Let's try the I mean, next Samuel definitely has a, I mean, she has, you know, her ultimate is absurd and being able to tap down creatures and draw a lot of cards, um, specifically because it doesn't, you know, specify it can attack anyone or deal any damage. Yeah, it's true. Draw cards I did put Tamio into my Derevi deck, so. Yeah. Um, okay, the next category, or the, yeah, category was our best cre- preview card, non-reprint. So right. we didn't allow burgeoning because it was obviously going to win. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, and also like Mystical Tutor or National Zone. Those weren't fair. Yeah, exactly. So only new uh, cards. We have Second Harvest, Token Doubler. Padim, Console of Innovation, uh, makes all your artifacts hexproof and draws you cards. Cruel Entertainment, a card that lets you control two players' turns, essentially. Well, well maybe. Maybe, You yeah. could have two. I don't know exactly how it works. Honestly. Just don't concede in response to okay. some of the casting yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And then Soul Separator, which is an artifact that lets you take a card out of your, uh, I was going to say garage, out of your graveyard and split it into a spirit with the abilities and like a creature with the stats. Yeah, it separates the soul from the body, as it were. Oh, this is interesting. I'm going to say, I think I'm biased because I I recently lost to your Brea deck and it has Padim in it, but Mm -hmm. I'm going to say Padim. I'm going to say Second Harvest, even though it's a card that I have yet to really play in any decks because I think it has the biggest upside although i would say padim i mean artifacts with hexproof is pretty, pretty nasty good. yeah pretty good i sort of want to switch to second harvest i oh, know i'm gonna stay the course padim let's see what the voters said the voters <clears throat> said and the um award goes to there's oh padim, padim. with 35 percent of the vote and cruel entertainment was third second harvest was second that's pretty close we 32 the top two. percent yeah yeah it actually only lost by three percent yeah so. pretty good all right I, I feel better we were more in tune there with our with our patrons apologies soul separator you were you didn't make the cut it's not it's not that good the 10 percent of the yeah. vote um okay the next category is best level up episode so we nominated episode one and one which was the correct answers. Mm-hmm. Episode 127, card advantage and card draw. 110, how to play faster. And 117, building on a budget. This one's tough. I would say it's between 101 and 127, so correct answers and card advantage and card draw. You know, I'm going to give it to card advantage and card draw. I think that's applicable in every game, and it's something you always need to know more about. It's interesting because I narrow it down to the same two. I think it's correct answers or card advantage, card draw, but I'm going to say correct answers. Because it has correct in the title? So that, yeah, I'm just going to think that's going to sway the voters. <laughs> it's just a psychological reason. Oh, really? <laughs> uh, because card advantage and card draw destroyed. Wow, destroyed. With 58% of the vote. Oh, my goodness. Uh, and by the way, my choice, correct answers, was last place. <laughs> so <laughs> maybe, maybe it was too generic of a title. Maybe. Um, How to Play Faster came in second, uh, according to our patrons, at 20%. And Building on a Budget was third at 16%, basically. Yeah. Sam Mackey's got to be feeling pretty good, by the way. Yeah. I mean, that that is great. Everyone thought that the episode where his question was asked was the best level up episode of the year. Good job, Sam. Of the year. Good job, Sam. Sam, if you've got any other ideas for future show, shows, <laughs> go ahead, please send them please in. Please let us know. <laughs> uh, all right, next up, best reprint. Uh, so this isn't our preview card. This is just the best card they reprinted. It turns out all four of these uh, ca- cards <laughs> were in EMA because... I mean, we thought maybe Commander 2016 would have some cards that would maybe be able to represent here but the ema cards are just so good yeah i mean the only thing that potentially is missing is burgeoning yeah um but the four cards are mana crypts force of will vampiric tutor Jeez. since I, as you wrote here diving top oh, divining <laughs> sorry Shivam. Dive. Uh, <laughs> dive 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 um, only three cards into your deck holy cow mana crypt force of will vampiric tutor sensei's divining top <laughs> We got those cards this year in sets. Yeah. That's insane. We got Mana Crypt twice. We got Mana Crypt twice. Because of the Kaladesh inventions. Um, uh, wow. Well, you got to go first. I think I know my answer. <sighs> well, it's between Crypt and Top, because they go in every deck. Yep. I agree. <sighs> I'm going to say Crypt. I'm going to go with Crypt as well, because it is a card that was extremely hard to get. It was a book promo, and the price was through the roof. And I think this is the one that needed a reprint, um, even if people disagree with it being in the format. Yeah, I'm not saying whether I think it should be banned or not. I'm just saying it was the best, uh, you know, it was the most powerful reprint. And boy, did the listeners agree. The patrons said, yes, 51% to Mana Crypt. Whoo diddly. 
Wow, Sensei's Divining Top and Force of Will were exactly tied at 21.6%. I wrote it wrong in the poll. I wrote Sensei's Diving Top. Uh, That's my bad, because you copy and pasted it, I'm sure. (laughs) I'll take responsibility for the diving. They were like diving. If it it said divining, it probably would have won. That's right. But Force of Will and Sensei's Top uh, both got 21.6%, so the exact same number of votes, 19 for both. Yep, pretty interesting. interesting. Yep, but yeah. Crypt, okay, we were right on that one like that. Okay, this is fun. So oh. the next category is our best intro song. Nominated were Don't Worry, Be Happy. The next was I'm hooked on a feeling. Bop, bop, bop. I'm high. Okay, sorry. Um, and then, oh. You've lost that love and feeling. Boom, boom, boom. Whoa, that. Okay. And then, uh, oh. I can feel it coming in the air tonight. Hold on. The rest of the episode is just us singing that. <laughs> yeah. Um, in the air tonight, I got to say, I think that was our best one. Because we actually, because we just got the most into it, too. Yeah. <laughs> That's that's my vote. <laughs> yeah, um, I like took down the feeling as well. That that one is gonna like it was in two episodes. Yeah. By the way, feeling the word feeling comes up in both of these. We got a lot of feels. And don't worry, be happy. Happy is a feeling. Uh, but maybe that's why it has to be in the air tonight. But it I guess. But, out but what different. are you what are you feeling in the air tonight? Oh, I can, I can feel, feel it. it. Holy crap! I so didn't even feelings realize feelings are in every single one of these. We had some sort of bias when we nominated these. Clearly, yeah, uh, they're all, all great songs. Uh, I'm gonna go in the air tonight. Phil okay. Collins, all the way. That uh, Cadbury eggs uh, commercial. All right, what do we got? Oh, hooked on a feeling with 54 percent of the vote. Wow. We wow. did sing it twice. Yeah. So there is that. Uh, there was bias for that at that point. Um, because, in the air tonight was second. Yeah. And if you doubled the number from in the air tonight, it still loses stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, you'd be over 100%, which would be weird. But. Yeah, that's, that's a pie graph that just doesn't work. <laughs> okay. <Pie chart. laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right. Oh, man, I'm way behind here. Hold on. Toss, toss, toss. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Best new non-legendary card. Which oh, we're means getting to the gonna, real ones now, yeah. the real categories There's going to be a category for best legendary card as well. Um, this is, ooh, this is interesting. Eldrazi Displacer. A white flicker effect using colorless mana on the doesn't, creature. And doesn't, uh, comes back immediately, immediately not an end step, very and important. doesn't tap the creature. So I mean, sorry, doesn't, doesn't tap, tap the, the displacer, displacer yeah. so you can do it multiple times. Deep glow skate. Ooh, Ooh double bubbling all season. counters on stuff. Yeah, bubbling season. Um, anguished Unmaking, which is a three mana instant speed utter end that deals three damage to you. Who cares? Who cares? <laughs> and then, oh man. Pan Harmonicon. Oh, I don't know. My vote's for Pan Harmonicon. Uh, yeah. You I can mean, put it into it. I love that card. Hey, what makes Eldrazi Displacer better if you're flickering under the battlefield effects? Pan Harmonicon. That's a good point. It's a really good... Okay, I'm with you. I, I do think Pan Harmonicon. It might be a little bit of bias because I, I just love the card, but... Let's see what the voters said. Wow. <laughs> Overwhelming a, This majority. is our biggest landslide of all. Yeah, 62.5% said Panharmonicon. Um, and it was uh, next up was Deep Glow Skate, followed by Eldrazi Displacer. But yeah, I mean, I, I think this is an easy choice here. Um, We're seeing also that I think um, uh, artifacts have a pretty big advantage because they can be played in any deck. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, I would have expected a little more love for the Displacer, but uh, maybe the colorless mana threw some people off. Yeah, it could be. All right, the next one is Best Overall Episode. Interesting. So we nominated Episode 99, which was the Commander Summit, uh, Episode 100, which was the live stream, our Deck Doctors episode with Ailey, Eternal Pilgrim. Return. And then Episode 105, which was uh, EDH Essentials, which was the one taken over by Craig, but one of our very popular episodes for the year. Mm -hmm. What if I said EDH Essentials? I kind of want to say live stream, but... Live stream is the one that's the most different. Yeah, from it's the, the most others. different by far. It, it it obviously set a huge, like we watch it. It's like it's live. Yeah. Um, but the audio quality wasn't great. It, so. it was tough. It was live. It's a live TV and, and a live TV. Sh- like, have you ever watched like the live version of you know I don't know Grey's Anatomy or something? I don't know if Grey's did it, but oh, a lot yeah, of shows it, have. You see it on the those set, episodes yeah. are cool for what they are, but they're not usually the best at version of the show, like that live episode of... Yeah, you know. they can't plan out as much in advance. Yeah, and you, you have to just, you have to do it in a certain way that allows you some leeway. It's not as tight, right? Mm-hmm. Um, 
So I'm not going to say live stream, even though that could win because it's the most different. The Commander Summit was really good yeah. too. Um, I, that's the one I'm going to say. I'm going to say Commander Summit as my what I think is the best episode. But I I could see EDH Essentials being it. Yeah, I you if know, it is if it is it's awesome because Craig that's a Craig episode. <laughs> that's like, a Craig that's episode. Craig's idea. Yeah, I'm going to give it to EDH Essentials because it is a sort of a coverall. Um, so I'm I'm hedging my bets here, and also I would love to see Craig win this. Let's see. Ooh, it looks like EDH Essentials. Craig. Craig Blanchett, you, buddy, I'm buying you a birthday cake, even though it's not your birthday. That is fantastic. So 54% said EDH Essentials. Uh, Commander Summit actually came last. Uh, the Deck Doctors episode was third, and the live stream was, was second. second. Yeah. Very interesting. Okay. Time for our final oh, award. Yeah. This Very, is the big one. This, this is the... This is like the best picture of this, you know, of this award show. Yeah, it's a commander podcast. So let's talk about the best new, essentially, commander. We said legendary card, but we, it's a legendary creature at the end of the day. All right, we have four of them, obviously. The first, Leovold, Emissary of Trest. He is the Sultai commander that essentially does not let other people draw more than one card a turn. Atraxa, Praetor's Voice, a four-color commander that proliferates at end step and has flying vigilance, death touch, haste. No, not haste. Flying uh, Vigilance, Death link. Touch, Lifelink. Brea, Ethereum Shaper, another four-color commander that is the artifact goddess of them all. Uh, and then Emrakul, the promised end. A new Emrakul. That's legal and commander. Yeah, that takes an opponent's turn. Really, Mind Slaver's a turn, and then they get a turn after that. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a 15-15 Flying Trample or something. <sighs> boy. Oh, boy. <sighs> okay, so... <clears throat> see, this is a tough one because... You have to define best. Because mm -hmm. I think Atraxa is going to win because she's the most popular. Yeah, I can see that. But I think Leovold's the most powerful. Mm -hmm. I agree with that. But I think Brea is my vote. Because I think she is the most she's powerful. She's your favorite? I think she's actually more powerful than Atraxa. Yeah, I think she is. I think she's less powerful than Leovold, though. Yeah, Leovold definitely wins the power. You know what? Yeah, how would you define best? It, and I don't know. I, I'm... Well, Because we just said best. <laughs> Good it, job, guys. Yeah. You made a nice poll. Really. Well, this is how they're supposed to be. It's a, you know, <laughs> it's, true. it's subjective. So, yeah, yeah. Um, I I'm going to say, for my own vote, I think I would vote Brea mm -hmm. because she combines power level with you know a cool mechanic that I like and four colors. Yeah, but but I I think Leovold is the most powerful of those cards. I'm gonna stick with Brea. Okay, we both right. said Brea. Ooh, best new legendary creature. This was a tight race. It was a tight race, but the Traxa won it yep. with 40.9% of the vote, as predicted by Josh Lee Kwai. Leovold was number two with 29.5%, and Brea was number three with 25%. And Emrakul, as large as she is, took a very small spice of that sliver. Pretty interesting, though, because in our other categories, we saw that the artifact, which is basically the colorless card that can go in any deck, mm -hmm. was getting a pretty big bump in most of the situations. But Emrakul is the colorless here didn't at all maybe because she cost 12 mana here's the thing though i think emrakul is 13 13 right i think emrakul is definitely uh more powerful than atraxa for sure yeah i think so too um but atraxa is really cool and fun deck to build around and mm -hmm. people probably just went with favorite and that's what we did too right because right. we didn't pick leovold even though we thought that was the most powerful we yeah did. yeah yeah so. and, and like it's a if you're building a deck around something you're going to want more colors than not so i can see why uh why atraxa would take first uh, for being popular so it'll be interesting we're gonna put all of these onto twitter uh to get sort of the community at large and their votes and see what they said um yeah we should look at some of these yeah uh, we got some honorable mentions we asked uh, we had a little extra thing at the bottom if you had anything to say yeah uh, from our patrons uh, someone said aetherflux reservoir for best non-legendary that's the card that you can pay 50 life to <laughs> drain someone to 50 that is actually a really strong card in yeah. commander i'm glad i haven't seen it yet um best sponsor two people wrote card kingdom all, all right. right game nights has been a nice addition thanks guys best host dog <laughs> kiwi kiwi my doggy good job kiwi she's sitting right job, over there she's being just, nice what, you guys quiet. talking about me she hears her name and her ears go yeah um i love the game night episodes as i'm sure everyone will say but they are great but some of the best ones were the unique ones seeing the color wheel series again was amazing the commander summit was very fun but my favorite episode was the behind the packs episode josh huh. uh well i guess it's your vlog and us talking to uh, uh mark rosewater uh, but i didn't have the funds or time to go to the, some of the cool magic events and seeing them was really awesome so yeah your vlog nice cool 
Best new segment. Stats. That's the best new segment on the show for sure. Good call. You start doing videos where we get to see your smiling faces this year. That counts as best of 2016 for sure. I got to smile more, evidently. Tall Tales episode. All right. All right. We're going to have to do another Tall Tales episode. Yeah. The problem is now we're doing the gameplay videos, so you can just see the tales in action. Yeah. I'm a big fan of you and your meta episode. That really helped me solidify our playgroup and be aware of everyone's needs. Cool. Best dressed. Josh's Stranger Things Hawkins AV Club t-shirt. Somebody noticed. Yeah. Yeah. I need to wear that again. I don't know where that is. I got to yeah. find it. Uh, you know what? You ever done that where like a, sh- a shirt gets dirty and you throw it and then you, for some reason it doesn't get in with the rest of the wash and then you're like, where did that shirt gone. go? It's yeah, where did that go? Forever. Dang it. Um, loved all the co- collaborations with Commander's Brew and Commander. And yeah, that was a blast too. I, I love uh, bringing our community together like that. Those guys are great. Their shows are great. You should definitely check out Commander's Brew and Commander. And if you're listening to this show, you're going to like those shows. Yeah. Oh, someone said Out of the Box is not on the best overall episode. It wasn't a podcast episode, but they said it was a game changer for us and it's how we want to watch Commander games. Pretty awesome. cool. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Well, big thanks to our patrons for being our academy 100%. voters for this. Uh, we'll, we'll definitely do that in the future. Some pretty interesting answers. I think we batted pretty well. We did a pretty good. Yeah. We uh, I'm, I'm very glad that we had such a good turnout. I'm going to take screenshots of all these for our editor as well so that he can uh, put them in the episode. All right. Now it's time to for To the Listeners, where we ask our listeners a question. Um, what was your favorite Command Zone moment of 2016 so if anything stands out to you if you have a favorite episode just a favorite moment a favorite mm-hmm. intro song one cool thing you either realized or learned or that was enlightening to you or that you found funny we'd love to hear about it in the comments you can email us or on twitter uh again that's at command cast you can also tell us what your favorite card kingdom shout out was we did a bunch of them this year uh and here's one more CardKingdom.com is our sponsor for the show make sure you guys go to CardKingdom.com slash command zone to support the show I'm not sure when you're listening to this. It might be close to Christmas, but you might have time because they're very fast with their shipping. They are. Still get that last minute gift to where you need to get it. And if you're in Seattle, go just go check out the actual store. Be a gift to yourself, you know, to go, go be and check a out the gift to yourself. Check out the flagship store or the <laughs> it is one. a pretty cool place. Or the Mox Boarding House. Yeah, awesome, awesome place. Okay, so now we're going to do our Christmas gift giveaways. These We have three things to give away. This is the Kaladesh bundle and two of the uh, Planeswalker decks. These are things that Watsi was nice to provide to us, and we're going to provide them as Christmas gifts to our patrons. So if you are one of our patrons right now, you have a chance to win. Um, we're going to randomly pick, selected. We're going to randomly <laughs> select a couple people. The first one is Natalie Goslin. Natalie, you have won the Kaladesh bundle. bundle. Congratulations. Natalie, you need to um, email us. You can use the Patreon email, your address, so that we can send that out mm-hmm. to you. Commandzonecast um, at gmail.com. And the next two people will receive a copy of the Planeswalker deck. There's a, what is it, Chandra and Nissa? Chandra and Nissa. We will randomly assign these, so we're not going to announce which one you get. The first one is Robert Good, Goody? Good. G-O-O-D-E. Robert, we met you, I think, at PAX. Mm-hmm. I think, we, yeah, I think, Jimmy, you played a game with him. I think, I believe, I, I actually play any commander at PAX, unfortunately. No, at the um, Card Kingdom thing. Oh, at the Card Kingdom. I did yeah, play. Command. I think Robert was there. <laughs> I'm a dirty liar. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, so you get one of the Planeswalker decks. Robert, please send in your, um, your I address. almost said email, but I mean address. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, use email if you want. <clears throat> and then the last one is Jamar Perry. You're going to get the other Planeswalker deck. Please, again, send in your mailing address, and we will send out your Christmas gift. If you guys away. can get it to me um, before this Friday which would be December 23rd. I should be able to send them out prior to Christmas. Can't guarantee it'll get to you before Christmas. Obviously, the sooner, the better. So please. But then Jimmy is out of town, so if you miss that window, yeah, you're going to have to wait till the new year. All right. Not so bad. You'll still get it. That's how it goes. All right. Time for the end step where we talk about something cool outside the world of magic. What are your holiday plans, Josh? Uh, going down to San Diego. Nice. Going to hang out with some fam there. Uh, going to do another escape room. Ooh, cool. It's become sort of a tradition when we go to San Diego because... Um, there are a lot of them down there. Yeah, and so one of my... my uh, well, one of Elle's cousins, sort of like my cousin now, um, Ryan, who I think you met at GPLA, he mm-hmm. actually helped design a escape room down there. I played Commander with him. Yeah, yeah. I was, drafted with him as well. Yeah, so Ryan is... 
sort of into the scene down there, and so he knows all the good escape rooms, and so nice. he always points us in the right direction. And He's we're your personal like, Yelp. Yeah, we're like big escape room fans now. It, if you haven't done an escape room, you should totally do it. If you're a Magic the Gathering player, I think you You'll will love it. like it. Yeah, uh, but definitely, if, especially if you like logic puzzles or just puzzles in general and stuff. Yeah, It's super, fun. super fun. I, I guarantee you'll like it if you try it out. Just Google um, escape rooms in your area, and mm-hmm. they're, they're kind of becoming a, a big thing, so there'll yeah. probably be a couple, hopefully. Um, how about you? Uh, my parents, uh, like I mentioned earlier, they live in Seattle, so it's constantly rainy and kind of muggy and gross uh, during the regular year. Uh, so they decided that they wanted to go somewhere warm for th- uh, for Christmas, so we're all going to go out to Miami for a couple of weeks. Uh, I'm going to try right. and check out an LGS or two out there. I'll be there, I think, for one or two Friday Night Magics, so I'll definitely try and go to one and hopefully meet some players there as well. As You're going to be there out. for New Year's? Yes, I will be there for New Year's. You're going to celebrate New Year's like three hours before me? Yeah, I will. Sweet. I'll send you a picture. Thank you. And be like, spoiler alert. It's 2017. Hopefully it's better than 2016. (laughs) Not in the magic world, though. Boy, a lot of fun stuff happened this year for magic. So let's just wish everybody out there happy holidays. I hope it's great. I hope you're with your family. Or friends or loved ones. Stay safe if you're in those snowy places. Mm -hmm. You know, but everybody have fun. Thanks for sticking with us. Have a happy new year. I don't even know if this is our last episode of the year, but in case it is. (laughs) Have a happy new year. <laughs> All right, everybody. Oh, no. We got to mention our sister podcast. Yeah, I was wondering if you're going to get to that. I was, I was rapping. Like, Where's Segway Man? Hmm. Segway Man. Here he comes. He went on vacation. Oh, yeah. yeah okay. He's off for the holidays. Uh, that's why. Segways can travel pretty far. <laughs> Sorry, Alex. He, like, made ben. it a mile out of the uh, <laughs> of the city, and he was like, crap, I ran out okay. of battery. <laughs> oh, vacation. Our sister podcast, The Masters of Modern. You can find them on Twitter, at the MMCast, hosted by Alex Kessler and Ben Bateman. They talk about the matter for- modern format and it, all things competitive magic you can also find them right next to us at our new magic hub which is collected dot company mm-hmm. and the editor for the show is terry robertson does all of our video content youtube.com slash the command zone podcast see our lovely smiling faces as someone mentioned on our uh, our, our best of 2016 poll uh, and Jeffrey Palmer uh, does the awesome living card animations that we talked about earlier in this show with the Soul Ring intro. And now I think the uh, there's a new outro as well. So you can find him on Twitter at Living Cards MTG. All right, for real. Happy holidays. If we don't talk to you in between uh, Christmas and New Year's, happy New Year's also. Yeah, and let us know if you guys got anything awesome for Hanukkah slash Christmas slash Kwanzaa that's magic related. I want to know. Yeah, if you open any expeditions or they're not called that masterpieces. I definitely want to see pictures on Twitter. For sure. All right, everybody. Thanks for listening. And we hope you have a great new year and all that good stuff. And, you know, Christmas or whatever. <laughs> Bye. Peace on Earth. <laughs> see what I did there? Peace on Earth. Oh, yeah. yeah. Have a happy, 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 happy holiday. Oh, I thought you were going to do the Adam Sandler. Have a happy, happy, oh, yeah. happy, happy Hanukkah. We yeah. should have sang the Hanukkah song. Put on your <laughs> yarmulke. It's time for Hanukkah. Hanukkah. The owner of the Seattle Supersonicas. Yeah. Celebrate it's Hanukkah. Hanukkah. All right, peace out. <laughs> Later. Thank you for your attention. For further inquiries, send an email to commandcast at rocketjump.com or ask us on Twitter at JF Wong and at Josh Lee Kwai. See you later, alligator. Greetings, humans. <laughs> All right. We still need to think of a song. Hold on, Terry. We could just make one up, too. Make one up? Yeah, that's what we've done. It's on It's on the Excel sheet. I was like, oh, yeah, we've made up some songs before. You just want to write a song in real time? No, and I'm just thinking of that ABBA. Happy New Year! Happy New Year! Happy New Year! Those are the only bad. words I know. Fizzled. <laughs> Fizzled? Does not resolve. <laughs>